All right, guys, Ryan here, back in the tent shed uh, with my 20-pound propane tank uh, drip-fed oil burner that I made. <clears throat> Got the oil up there again, the line coming down. It's just a universal mesh-lined rubber hose. It's good for good for chemicals and stuff, so I use that for the oil. Ball valve. It's all black iron pipe, um, half inch. <clears throat> Comes down right into the brake rotor. I need a 12 inch brake rotor on the bottom. Um, blocked off all the air holes except for three in the front. Because you can't have too many holes for airflow down low to the oil. Because it'll. Um, cool it off too much and it won't burn properly. It'll be a lot of flame but it won't burn hot enough to uh, get rid of the smoke and the soot. So, got that welded to a 4 inch steel pipe, pretty thick. Got all these holes drilled, some of your holes drilled down low, uh, up high. The holes down low help to keep the flame going, and all the holes up high help to add air to the uh, the gas is released off the oil and it makes them ignite better up high so that uh, makes it burn cleaner. I got that welded up into the bottom of this 20 pound propane tank <coughs> and uh, yeah so it's basically an expansion chamber on the top for the all the flame to come up through and spread throughout the top of this to uh, bring the heat everywhere. There's a, another four inch pipe welded to the back. Going out the uh, tent wall there that's all melted and shit. <coughs> and some angle iron legs. And it's pretty simple to build one of these. You just have to know what you're trying to do with the uh, practice with the airflow, but I've got it down pretty good here. You want minimum like just little holes in the slots in the rotor there for the initial combustion and then once it heats up it'll start using these holes to keep the flame going because the flame will start rising up and once it gets up here the oils that are in the uh, are being released from the hot oil well uh, or the gases that are released from the hot oil will um, ignite better up top and it'll it won't be so smoky out the smokestack uh, I just have a 10 inch cast iron frying pan here that I hooked to the bottom of this let me grab something to clean this out with um, use this old file I guess okay, it's just this crusty flaky crap that's left over Some of this. You want to clean these stoves. Every, at least once every couple burns. Say maybe once every eight hours of burning time. Just knock that out. See, nice and clean. Not really. What I got here is a hook I welded to the back. You can see what I'm doing here. I hooked the pan up onto that in the back. And then in the front, I got this metal plate sticking off the top here with a bolt. If I can do this one-handed. Get this on here. Come on. Just push the bolt through. I have one of these little uh, pins that stick through. Get this in frame here. Stick through the holes. I want it on the bottom hole for now so I can get it to open the light. Turn this to the side. Put that in there. See, I got a gap in there now under the, under the rotor so I can stick my torch in there to light it. <clears throat> and alright, let me uh, reset this camera so 
so I can use both my hands and uh, show you how to light it. Be right back. All right, here we go. Camera set up. Hopefully, it stays there. All right, so what I do? Take my propane torch and lighter, and I use a little bit of gas. It's just a can that I had from my chainsaw. Just put a little gas in it. Turn the oil on a little bit. Too much. Most of the time with these, you want to run them just to the point where it's just about to drip, but it's still a solid stream of oil. You can't run too too much because they'll either not be able to combust enough and fill up your pan and overflow, or the flame will be way too hot and melt something. I pour just a little gas down in the hole there. Run. Oil run for a minute. I'm trying to light this. You just take the torch. Boom. Light it up. Then pull my pin out. Push it up to the next level to close the pan off. And let it go. Now that's burning the the gas. Splinter. That's burning the gas. Take this camera back over here. See, you know, it's burning pretty good right now because it still has. It's burning off the gas right now. But that's my oil drip. You can see that. Not too, too much. Just a little tiny, steady stream. And there's the holes in the, uh, the fire chamber. You can see the flame. It's nice to have these holes. I mean, it probably doesn't burn quite as well because it has a, an air leak in the, the upper chamber where the, the flu vacuum is coming from, but it's nice to be able to see how high the flames are going up in the tank. <clears throat> but yeah, that's it. There's just a slight gap between the rotor and the the pan. You can see my three air holes that I left over in the front, and the rest of them are blocked off. It's better if you have a uh, the non-vented rotors, like the rear of a car, because then you don't have to worry about blocking off the air holes. You can just uh, drill a few holes in the top here to add the initial airflow. <coughs> Oh, there it is burning. I'm gonna let that burn for a minute, and then uh, while it heats up, and then I'll show you what it's doing once it gets hotter. All right, I figure while I'm waiting for that to heat up, I'll show you this. This is one of the original burners I made. It went in the bottom of this big tank. Uh, this one is the unvented rotor. See, it doesn't have any holes, it's just a flat disc. Um, I'll show you what I did on the bottom side. Over here, turn it around. See, you cut out the bottom, of, you cut out the, uh, cut out the center of the rotor, you weld the pipe on afterwards, but you measure, draw your line on the bottom, on the uh, top, where the lug nuts go through uh, to get the right size for the hole. And then you just cut between the holes on the um, top of the brake rotor. So you have a nice big opening about, about the size of the pipe. This hole is here is a slit that is fluffy. Soot that builds up from burning the oil. You gotta clean that stuff out. When you clean your pan, just get up in there with a screwdriver or whatever, scrape it out. And uh, yeah, so that's what you do with the rotor. And you gotta make sure when you're building one of these 
that your burn chamber pipe is the same diameter as your flue or your smokestack because you want the right the proper uh, airflow suction going out the chimney to suck the flames up from underneath and to bring the air in through these holes <clears throat> otherwise it won't burn properly and you'll have a lot of smoke and that soot that I showed you in that thing will build up like crazy block it right off it'll do it'll make that much soot and you know a good days burn but the longer you run it and the hotter it gets it tends to burn that stuff off uh, so you might not have to clean it as much if you use it all day long and it gets really hot but here it's getting going pretty good now it's just burning oil There's no more gas in there feel the heat coming off it now flames still pretty short but once this thing's going the flame will reach right to the top of the tank and it'll start heating up I mean you can get this thing red hot depending on how much oil you're putting into it but you gotta find the sweet spot where it's not adding so much oil that it's not being able to burn it fast enough and it just ends up filling your pan because then you'll have a spillover and luckily I've, I've had a spillover here you can see some oil on the ground uh, <clears throat> yeah I'm still my voice is still changing apparently but uh, I've had a spill and luckily while it was burning the oil that was spilling out wasn't on fire so it'd be nice if you had a uh, like a baking sheet or some type of pan underneath it just in case to collect the oil you don't want it spilling all over the place if you got a garage or the concrete floor you don't need oil spilling everywhere and mishaps do happen but uh, luckily this one it seems that when the oil comes out it it cools off and doesn't doesn't stay on fire which is good but uh, yeah that's about it I mean this thing this thing will heat this tent say it's if it's like 20 degrees outside I could run this and it would bring this tent up to probably 50 degrees just enough so you can't see your breath anymore and this is just a tent, I mean, with giant holes in the walls, and it's a piece of shit, but uh, it takes the edge off in here anyways. If you had like a metal building or a uh, insulated garage, I mean, this little, this little heater here would easily, easily heat a two-bay garage. I mean, it would take a, you know, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes to heat up in there, but this thing would definitely be able to heat the place as small as it is and uh, yeah this tent here is a 12 by 26 so if it can heat up the inside of a tent in the winter time it'll definitely work in a garage that's insulated or has less uh, air problems if it was sealed better <clears throat> I plan to uh, wood add wood to the all the pipes and then strap the whole thing and and uh, put metal over the whole thing this this spring so hopefully that'll be way better and get rid of my plywood floor and use gravel be a much nicer shop and I'm definitely gonna use this thing uh, in here I'm gonna set it up permanent for the heat in the winter time because I live in Maine and it gets freaking cold and I like to be out in the shop working and tinkering on stuff and I can't if it's freaking below zero outside freeze my ass off <clears throat> but I got a 10 foot uh, smokestack on this thing I don't know if we can see up there just got a little bit of smoke right now because it's not, not quite full temperature but once it gets to full temperature the smoke will disappear and it'll be a complete combustion and I go through probably 
two liters an hour of oil. Add a little drip like that. But if you have a source for uh, used cooking oil or used motor oil or anything, transmission fluid, then uh, one of these is the way to go. You can burn all that stuff and get uh, free heat for cheap. I mean, I didn't buy anything for this except the black iron pipe for the thing, for the uh, the oil drip. I bought the ball valve and the, the hose for the bucket. I got this pipe for free. I, got, I had to buy the frying pan and the angle iron for the legs, and that was it. So I got maybe 30 bucks in this thing. Most of these parts you can find anywhere. A lot of people throw them away. Brake rotors, nobody keeps those. Propane tanks that are expired, nobody keeps those. So it's pretty easy to get the, get the parts you need to build one of these. Look how white the flame is. It's it's hot. She's still heating up. It'll be another 20 minutes and she'll be roaring. But thanks for watching, guys. Uh, that'll be it for this video. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, I'll show you how to build these in the future when I build another one. I'm probably going to use that burner I took out of the big one here and make another one of these 20 pound propane tank ones because uh, a buddy of mine wants one for his garage. So, stay tuned if you want to see how they're made. I'll definitely make videos of. Uh, my future projects. I'm just starting back on the channel here after about four years of not doing any videos. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.